Labi, mēs sāksim mūsu otro sesiju. Mums ir, jau man vaks ir jauka dāma, tā kā situācijas mainās. Thank you all. Um, my name is Berenice. I am the uh, younger sister of Daryl. And before we start today, I just wonder if we can open with a word of prayer. Uh, es esmu Berenice, uh, jaunāk, uh, es esmu jaunāk par savu brāli Darylu, un uh, es gribētu sākt ar lūkšanu. Father, we just thank you so much for your blessings, and we thank you for the way that you have blessed in the past, and you will in the future. Tēvs, es tevis pateicīgs par tām svētībām, ko tu mums esi dāvājis, un es pateicos gan par to, ko tu esi darījis pagātnē, gan arī to, ko tu darījis nākotnē. And as we remember your blessings of the past, may you make us mindful uh, that you are ever close to us. Gai mums atcerēties no svētībām pagā, pagātnē, ka tu esi mums vienmēr blakus. Help us not to forget your goodness. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Un palīdz mums neaizmirst tavu labestību un tavu Amen. to, ka tu esi ar mums, Jēzus, vārdā. Amen. Uh, just as we start today, we're actually going to play a little video. Um, Iesākumā mēs uh, jums palaidīsim video. And this will actually help to tie a few things together. Un tas palīdzēs tā kā mazliet sasaistīt dažas lietas, ko es stāstīšu. And thereafter we'll continue our discussion about small groups, how it fits into the, con into the context of a local church, and why it's important to have a small group and a local church together. Un uh, runāsim pēc tam par mazo grupu tās kontekstu vietējā draudzē un kāpēc ir svarīgi mazai grupai piederēt vietējai draudzē. Um, because the founders of Gateway have been Asians, they have been really effective in reaching that target audience of young people anywhere from 18 to 26 years old. They are a vibrant, biblically-based, Christ-centered group of young people that are committed to the mission of Christ. They are fearless in their proclamation. Many of them are professionals, highly intelligent, and uh, they're able to reach other students. When you look at cities today, they are multi-ethnic. Uh, any city today that you look at, any major city in the world, you're going to have a high Asian population, you're going to have Hispanic populations, depending on the city. You may have Middle Eastern populations, you may have Eastern Europe populations. That's one factor that's a changing demographic in the inner city. Another aspect in the inner city is many young people moving back into the city today. Uh, the flight of the cities, I think, is over. You've got young people that are coming back into the city. They want to be where the action is. They want to be where life is. Young people today, particularly, are looking for authentic Christianity. They're looking for something genuine. They don't want ritual. They don't want sham. They don't want pretense. And they're willing to make unusual commitments. When you get a church like Gateway that says, look, we're not going to spend a lot of time on fluff. There are a variety of, of worship styles today. Uh, everything from the ultra-contemporary to the traditional. Gateway is a very unique church because it has, it has targeted not a worship style to attract, but it has said, look, we want to have a biblical foundation. We want to be an authentic New Testament biblical community. And what's important to us is openly following the Christian principles of the Bible. And that has attracted young people to them. It may teach us something as a religious community, and it may speak to other religious communities as well, who said, you know, if I want to attract young people, maybe I need to be a little more contemporary in my music approach. Maybe I need to be a little more entertainment-oriented. Maybe I need to be a little more amusement-oriented. Maybe we need to capture them that way. Gateway has really taken an opposite position, I think. They've said, if you want to attract young people, you need to be authentic in who you are. And it's that authenticity of Christianity with that biblical base that has been, I think, a powerful attraction. Gateway is an urban outreach to this community group, a difficult postmodern city. But today we are blessed to see what God is doing at Gateway. Today, after nine years, which is a global mission funded project, after nine years, we have seen three churches 
of which 280 people has attended this from 20, starting with 20 people. Today we have seen 130 baptisms, praise the Lord for that, of which majority are young people, urban young people living in the city. We've also seen a 90% retention rate, and that's really important because some baptisms, people come in and go out, but we have 90% retention rate. We are blessed to see God is developing an army of workers in Melbourne, as well as serving in other places throughout Australia and Asia. Gateway has four major components. The first component is care group. And care group is really important because that's where we build community. Care group also provides a place where people can find belonging. And in the context of belonging, they're open to believing. Care group uh, has been the place where many young people have come, young and old as well. My name's Lauren. I work as an editor. And um, care group for me is more than just a small group situation. Care group is an opportunity where I can learn how to love others and to share that love of Jesus with other people. Um, so often as Adventists we come together, um, but often our coming together is all about mutual encouragement and fellowship. Um, but care group is more than that. It's a chance for us to share the love that we have experienced with Jesus with our friends, with our colleagues, with our family members, with the people that God brings us into contact with on the street. Um, it's a place where we can come together and to um, really show people what it means practically to be a Christian. So care group studies are not designed to be doctrinal studies. They're actually designed to be simple, short and practical. The aim of care group, the aim of care group studies is really to help our new friends to learn what it means to walk with Jesus. The second component will be is worship. Okay, we have three worship centers today in the city, in the east and in the west. And Gateway as well is a training center where we have an army of workers rightly trained might furnish how soon the message of Christ will go to the world. And thus we've been focusing on training and equipping the young people to serve and have lay people working together. Finally, Gateway is a campus ministry. We've seen three secular campuses where young people have gone in, Bible workers have gone in, and I've seen many souls want to the kingdom as well. What got Gateway started? It is started by prayer. Before Gateway was launched, there was eight months of prayer by the core group. In addition to that, we've also spent time studying the book of Acts. And we see in the books of Acts that in chapter 1, that 120 people were praying for the work of the, before the Pentecost. So we prayed that, Lord, will you give us 120 prayer partners? And we gathered prayer partners, and the Lord blessed the work because 120 people were praying for our work and providing air cover for the ministry. The other building block is that when we started the work as lay people, we had no idea how to plant a church. We were given many books on church growth from different resources. But we decided to go back to the basics. We decided to study the book Acts, to read the book Evangelism by Ellen White, Gospel Worker by Ellen White. And we found in her writings very clearly that there is a blueprint in Testimony Volume 9. In a chapter called Matters of Labor for the City, there is 16 very, very important ingredients. And this has become our blueprint for urban evangelism. Simple, back to basic models, building community, building friendship with the community, inviting people to come and know us as a people, sharing boldly the Three Angels message has been the framework for our work. And to reach urban population, we need a diversity of channels to meet the needs of the people in the city. We have a beehive of activities including community health expo and the large shopping centres and public universities, depression recovery programmes, better life Cafe Food Ministry, Street Witnessing Ministry, Campus Ministry, and a whole host of activities. We need to mingle with the people. Often the question I ask is, if Gateway disappear tomorrow from the city, will the people in the city miss us? Did we make a difference? Did we impact lives in the city? Today, the work continues to expand, but we need to train. So Gateway continues to provide training programs for young people in Gateway with Bible Worker Program, as well as providing a yearly training conference. As well today, we provide an online training school called Rightly Train, 
Riley Train today has 206 countries accessing it, half a million video downloads. Today we have seen that expand and we are blessed to see other churches blessed by what God has given us. When young people have a vision for God's work, when they are excited, you will see their lives change. Introduce to you Vikram. Vikram was, came from Hindu background, Christian background. He was baptized in 2006. Today, he is serving as a pastor in this church. Another person I could introduce to you is Stephen. He was a sworn atheist. He, he thoroughly hated Christian when he, at campus. He got a job as a HR manager in one of the largest telco, but he was baptized four years ago, and today he's proclaiming the gospel fiercely to the Chinese community as well. And there's also young Daniel. Daniel came to our Bible school table. He taught to fix and fix our Bible workers because perhaps they did not know the truth. So he came to converse with them. To cut the story short, he received the book Great Controversy and read it fervently. And he found the truth. He came to an evangelistic series that I preach at. And what a blessing today, Daniel, as a university student, is a missionary on his campus. And he planned to be a pastor as well. This is what it's all about. Changing lives, transforming lives. And so what I see in Gateway is this combination of authentic biblical reality when it comes to doctrinal understanding and proclamation. Very Christ-centered, very biblical. But on the other hand, there's this warm fellowship. There is this idea that we're part of a family, part of a community. So you have this blend of biblical authority that gives young people certainty, but family that gives them fellowship. And that to me is a winning combination. The city continues to be an important place that we have to reach out to. The city is where the mass of young people have gathered. God has called us to proclaim the message of Jesus soon coming. And we need to go out to the city. And by using back to basic methods, the Lord will bless because Jesus is coming soon. As a means of introduction, I hope you can see from that video that care groups is really just one area or one element of the local church. Es gribēju, lai jūs redzat, ka mazās grupas, jeb šīs te rūpi grupas ir īstenībā viens no, tikai viens elements vietējā draudzē. And really, the two need to go together. And so in this session, what we want to discuss is some practical principles behind how a care group fits into the ministry of a thriving uh, local church. And so So as my brother introduced, we come from Melbourne, so all the way down near the South Pole. And if you saw from the video, we have a very uh, large city of about 4 million people. The irony is, though, that there are so many people in the city that really don't have enough time for one another. Tā ironija ir tāda, ka ir tik daudz cilvēku vienu vietu, un viņiem nav laika priekš, priekš citiem. It's a very busy city, everyone is um, very uh, professionally minded, they want to do their own thing, and many of them are considered to be very secular and atheist. Uh, ļoti aizņemta pilsēta, uh, daudz ir, kas uh, savus uh, ļoti profesionāli orientētu uz savām uh, karjerām, un daudz ir ateisti. There is very little regard for religion, and actually, our student club on campus uh, was placed next to the club for secularism or atheists. Mm. Un, uh, 
And the university told us, well, that's because we want to promote free thought and people can decide what they want to think. So they can compare you and they can compare the atheists and then you guys decide who will join which club. Un universitātes organizācija teica, nu, tas ir tāpēc, lai cilvēkiem būtu um, izvēles brīvību, viņi var novērtēt, ko viņi grib labāk vai grib šo pasaules uzskat vai šo. That is the mindset of an average Australian. Uh, tas ir tā, tāds ir domāšanas veids Austrālijā. Now, out, out of this group of people, out of this four million people, there is a church or a series of three churches now called Gateway. Un tātad šajos četros miljānos iedzīvotāji ir, ir draudz Gateway. And Gateway has this kur, vision. Kur tagad jau ir trīs draudzes. Un viņiem ir šāda vīzija. To be a soul winning and training center that multiplies churches every three years. Uh, būt dvēseļu mantošanas un apmācību centrs, kas... Uh, pavairo draudzes katros trijos gados. In a city like Melbourne that is a bold vision. Un uh, pilsētā kā Melbourne tā ir ļoti drosmīga vīzija. And more widely speaking in a church as a volunteer organization it's harder to get people motivated. Un uh, plašāk runājot uh, draudzei, kur ir brīvprātīgo organizācija, ir uh, daudz uh, grūtāk uh, mobilizēt, motivēt cilvēkus. The only way to do this is if we have a shared vision and shared values. Vienīgais veids, kā mēs to varam darīt, ja mums ir kopīga vīzija un kopīgas vērtības. Now, AYC, sorry, Gateway actually started in 2003. 2003. gadā mūsu draudzes tika dibināt. But the groundwork for that started a few years back, and I was eight years old when they started planning for Gateway to start. Un, protams, ka tie pirms tam, tas pirms pāris, Tātad pirms 2003. pāris gadu tas bija, lai sagatavotu šo te draudzes dibināšanu, man bija tad 8 gadi. When it came time for the church to start, my parents took my brother and I, uh, along with some youth, into this new church plant. Un uh, tad, kad mēs ar brāli bijām pusaudžišu gados, man vecāki pārcēlās uz šo draudzu, un mēs kļuvām daļu no šī, uh, šī, šīs te draudzes uh, nu, grupas. And at first, I was very upset. Un no sākuma es biju ļoti noskumusi. Because the only person that was around my age was my brother. Jo vienīgais, kas bija manā vecumā, bija mans brālis. And everyone else was at least 12 or 14 years older than me. Un vispārēji bija 12-14 gadus vecāk par mani. I was sad because I was going to miss my Sabbath school friends. Uh, man bija uh, skumi, tāpēc, ka man pietrūk mani Sabbath skolas draugi. And I would miss out on pathfinders and I would miss out on all these fun things. Un uh, man viss tās jaukās lietas kā ceļmeklētāji un citas lietas uh, gāja seceni. I remember specific, specifically my Sabbath school had four people and so I had a three other friends in my Sabbath school. Es atceros, ka tajā iepriekšējā Sabbath skolā bija četri cilvēki, kur bija trīs man draugi. When Gateway started, I had a Sabbath school also myself. Uh, kad uh, uh, Gateway's draudz uh, tik dibināta, man bija Sabbath skola vienai pašai. But over the time as Gateway grew and I, as I grew with Gateway, uh, my mindset changed. Augot, un man augot, man uh, domāšana mainījās. I grew to understand why my parents brought me to this church plant. Es sāku saprast, kāpēc mani vecāki, kāpēc mēs ar ģimeni pārcēlāmies uz šo jauno draudzi. You know, now in Australia there are many youth that like to uh, discuss why it is that youth leave the church. Daudziem Austrālijā tagad patīk diskutēt runāt par to, kāpēc ir tā, ka daudz jaunieši pamet draudzi. Those that are still in the church like to tell everyone why they think it is that other people have pushed their friends out of the church. Un tie, kas ir uh, draudzē, tiem patīk stāstīt, nu, kāpēc uh, kā citi ir izstumuši tos pārējos jauniešus, kuri ir pamatuši draudzi. And those that have left like to tell people why they are no longer there. Un tie, kuri ir paši vairs nav draudzē, tiem tie stāsta, uh, kāpēc viņi nav. But I remember, uh, as I found out about three years after we left uh, to start this church plant, un pēc trim gadiem, kad mēs jau bijām jau, jau devušies, lai uzsāktu šo jauno draudzi, that all three of my friends in my old Sabbath school left the church. Ka vispārēji mani draugi, tie trīs draugi no manas iepriekšējās Sabbath skolas pameta draudzi. And for one reason or another, that church had lost its direction. Un dažādu iemeslu dēļ šī draudz bija pazaudējusi virzienu. 
the youth were kind of left to do what they wanted to do to make sure that church was still a friendly place for the, them to be in. Jauniešiem, jaunieši būtu jau varēja darīt to, ko viņi grib, lai draudze būtu tā kā atvērta viņiem. But of those that stayed, there was a distinct difference. Sorry? Of those that stayed, so of those youth that were still in the church, there was a distinct difference. Uh, bet uh, tiem, kas bija, uh, tie, kas palika tajā draudzē, tur bija tāda uh, citas domas. And that was that they had these values. That, what? Sorry. That was that these youth had these values. Un uh, tā tad šiem jauniešu, kas pievienoja šai draudzē, viņiem bija šādas vērtības. And these are the values that we hope to underpin Gateway Church. Un šīs ir tās vērtības, uz kurām mēs dibinājām Gateway draudzi. So Gateway is a Bible-based church. Tātad Bībelē balstīta draudze. It is Christ-dependent. Atkarīga no Kristus. It is seeker-orientated, meaning targeted towards people that are non-Christians. Tātad meklētāju orientēta, tātad mērķēta uz tiem, kas meklē Dievu uz neticīgajiem. It is a church dedicated to mentoring youth, so making disciples. Tātad draudze, kas ir, 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 ir vēlas tātad nodarboties ar mentoringu un uh, atbalstīt. It, it wants to train and equip its young people to witness to others. Un uh, apmācīt un uh, sagatavot liecināšanai cit, citus. And it values accountability, both in group settings and on a personal level. Un uh, viena no vērtībām ir arī uh, atbildība, tātad personīga un grupas atbildība, vai mēs viens otru See, the beauty of care groups is that it's not merely a thing that your church can do, an activity. Tas skaistums par šo te rūpju, grupu, mazo grupu, nav tas, ka vienkārši draudz var darīt kādu aktivitāti. The care groups that we've visited all around the world look very different from one another. Tās mazās grupas, jeb tās rūpju grupas, kas ir visā pasaulē, arī citi ņēmuši tos, no šīs gateway draudz, tos koncepcijas, viņas izstās dažādi. Because care group is a principle, and the application can be very different from country to country. Jo šitā rūpju grupa ir princips, un tas, kā tas izpaužās, var ļoti atšķirties dažādās vietās. And the principle of care group is based on these Bible values. Un šīs te rūpju grupas principi ir balstīts uz šīm te vērtībām. So Gateway has a few key elements or key components. Tātad ir daži atslēgas sastāvdaļas, no kā sastāv šī te draudze. It was a ministry that was started by 19 to 22 year old youth. Tātad to uzsāka 19 līdz 22 gadu vecs jaunieši. And you'll see that care groups is only one of the four parts of the whole church. Un jūs redzat, kad šīs te mazās grupas, jās rūpa grupas ir tikai viena no četrām draudzes daļām. The church is, however, built on a network of these care groups, and there are some care groups overseas as well. Tātad šīs te mazās grupas ir izveidotas tā kā tīklā, viņas ir saistītas. We, Un dažas ir arī, viņiem ir citās, nu tajā okeānijā pāri, pāri citās vietās. We are a church that wants to multiply, and so we've actually started a second, a third, and now a fourth church plant. Un mēs esam draudzi, kas vēlas, varētu teikt, vairoties, un mums ir pirmā, otrā un trešā, un tagad trīs draudzes, un tagad mēs jau arī veidojam ceturto. We also run a training center where we train people to be Bible workers uh, and then to be evangelists when they go home after being international students. Mums ir arī uh, apmācību centrs, kur jaunieši, kuri vēlas būt Bībeles darbinieki vai tālāk vienalga vai mācītāji vai, vai misionāri vai, vai vienkārši ierinis locīgi, kuri grib kalpot, mēs viņus, mums ir apmācības programmas. And we sponsor what is called the Adventist Students on Campus Club. Un mēs arī finansējam paši uh, adventistu uh, studentu klubu, kas ir tā kā kalpošana universitātē. This is basically our fishing pond on four of the major universities in Melbourne. Tas ir būtībā mūsu uh, dīķis, kur mēs makšķerējam jaunas zivis uh, universitātē. And from there we feed those uh, friends that we find into our care groups and then into each of the churches on the universities. Un tur mums arī rodas uh, draugi, uz kurus mēs aicinām uz mazajām grupām. All in all, we hope that Gateway is an outreach center. Mēs, mūs tas galvenais mērķis, lai tā Gateway ir šīs te tāds aizsniegšanas misijas centrs. 
And as a result, God has blessed, and we have had about 150 plus baptisms since we started in 2003. Uh, we have a 93% retention rate. Uh, šis te uh, nu, palikšanas procents, jā, 93% no jaunkristītajiem ir palikuši draudzē, jā, tad ļoti augsts. And one of the top three tithe returning churches in the conference. Un uh, viņi ir uh, top three niekā no visvairāk, ā, ah, uh, is it in percentage? Uh, yes. Tā, uh -huh. tā tad viņi ir uh, viena no trijām draudzēm, kurā, kuras īpatsvars vis, uh, un draudzes locekļiem, kuri atgriež desmito. And this is all because of the values that underpin Gateway. Un uh, šis viss ir uh, šo te vērtību dēļ, kas bija dibinot Gateway. I want to emphasize that these values are not unique to Gateway, and many of the churches around the world are Bible-based and have those values at heart. Un, uh, protams, kad šīs te vērtības nav unikāls, tikai Gateway daudzām citām draudzēm arī ir šīs te vērtības. And as such, it makes care group an easy and a practical extension of that evangelistic mindset. Un šāda mazā grupa ar šādām vērtībām ir vienkārši dabisks evangelizācijas instruments. So today we want to share a little bit about the story of how Gateway actually started. Un tāpēc šodien es gribu mazliet īstenībā pastāstīt, kā šī te Gateway draudze sākās. And this is not the be all and end all, we do not have all the answers, but it's just an example of how God has blessed. Un protams, ka mums nav visas atbildes par to, kāpēc tas notika, kā, kā notika un kāds attīstījās, bet Kaut kas, ko mēs līdzlam par to, kā mūsu Dievs ir svētījis. So I mentioned before, the church actually started in 2003, but the planning actually began in 1999. Tātad draudz tika dibināt 2003. gadā, bet tā plānošana bija 1999. gadā. And that was because the church was about 40 minutes outside of the city of Melbourne. Un tas bija tāpēc, ka draudze bija 40 minūtes ārpus Melbourne, Melbournes pilsētas. And there was a sizable youth group. I am the little one here in purple. I was probably about eight. Un tur tāda jaunieša grupa, un es biju tur tā mazā meitenīte. And what the youth group found was that they had to, uh, they found it very hard to invite their friends to church because it was so far away. Un šie te jaunieši saprata, ka ļoti grūti uzaicināt savus uh, draugus uz uh, baznīcu. Nu, but, pirmkārt arī tāpēc, ka tā bija ļoti tāla no pilsētas. But they really had a burden to reach their friends, so they ended up hiring a bus and they would drive 40 minutes to the city to pick their friends up and then come to church. Bet bija tāda liela vēlēšanās, aizsniegt draugus, un, un viņi uh, izīrēja autobusu un brauc pakaļ tiem draugiem uz Melbourne un veda viņus uz uh, draudzi. Eventually they found that they were bringing people from all different directions, not only just the city, but other suburbs as well, to church. Un uh, ar laiku viņi ne tikai no vienas vietas veda, bet no jau četrām vietām uh, veda uz šo te atālo draudzi. And it was people like this that had the vision to start Gateway. Un tādi, tā, šie ir arī daļa no cilvēkiem, kas, kuriem bija šī te vīzija sākt šo te draudzi. The gentleman on the right, his name is Edmund. Tas puisis pa labi ir Edmunds. Edmund is one of the brightest, most intelligent people I have ever met. Uh, viņš ir viens no apdāvinātākajiem apdāvināta, cilvēkiem, kādas esmu sastaps. He has been headhunted to top chemical engineering companies all across the world. Viņa mēģina pieņemt nolīgu darbā uh, pasaules top... Uh, he, uh, he had the opportunity to work... Ķīmīs... Uh, no, a team is saistīt as companies. He had the opportunity to move anywhere in the world to work in the largest city. Uh, viņam bija viņam bija iespēja pārcelties uz jebkuru un no lielajām pasaules pilsētām. But deep down in his heart he had a burden for the people around his local church. Bet viņam dzīvi iekšā bija vēlēšanās uh, aizsniegt uh, cilvēks savā vietējā apriņķī. And so when Gateway was about to start, he decided to come back to Melbourne. Uh, un kad uh, Gateway tikai jo dibināšanas procesā bija, viņš nolēma atgriezties Melbourneā. He turned down some of the biggest jobs that he had ever received. Viņš uh, viņam nācās noraidīt vienu no viens no labākajiem piedāvājumiem. He had a young family to support. Viņam bija jauna ģimene, kas bija jaustura. 
but he told his job, I want to cut down my hours so that I will spend more time in Melbourne and less time traveling. Un viņš teica savā darba vietā, ka es gribu mazāk stundas ceļojot un es gribu vairāk pavadīt laiku Melbourneā. With their burden came sacrifice. Protams, ar viņa deksmi nāca arī upurs. But this is how Gateway started. Bet tā Gateway's draudze tik divināta. So God actually brought in some adult counselors to guide the young people. Un tā tad Dievs saved kopā šos te jauniešus ar ar tādu pieaugušiem padomu devējiem. At first the youth were saying, well, we have a comfortable size of 50 people already. Un uh, vispirms jaunieši teica, nu mums ir tāds jau jau tāds komfortabls 50 cilvēku skaitlis. There's no real need to go out and, you know, make effort. No, īsti tad vajadzību un un kaut ko iet ārā un pulēties. And even if we were to make friends, we don't know how to share with them. Un uh, pat ja mums būtos uh, jauni draugi, mēs nezinām kā līdzdalīt viņiem uh, Dievu. And so what the adult counselors did is they organized a revival program uh, to help the young people see how unique they were as Adventists. Uh, un tas, ko šitie uh, pieaugušie padomdevēji darīja, viņi organizēja tādas uh, atmodas uh, programmas, lai redzētu, cik uh, unikāli mēs kā Adventisti esam. And what they did was they looked at the books of Daniel and Revelation. Un uh, tur uh, viņi studēja atklāzumus no Daniela grāmatas. And they awakened in them a real love for the Bible. Un uh, viņi atmodināja tādu patiesu mīlestību pret Bībeli. And these are the principles that came out as an action or a reaction, a response, if you will, to the revival that they experienced. Un tātad šeit ir tāda principa, kas no uh, tiem radās, kā pēc, pēc te šīm te, uh, pēc šīs te atmodas. And I want to go through these and how and give you examples of how we've tried to incorporate these soul winning principles into not only care groups but the larger church. Un uh, tātad šī būs tātad dvēseļu mantošanas principi, ko ne tikai uh, var mazās grupās uh, īstenot, bet arī uh, lielāku draudžu kontekstā. The first principle as we've talked about is that you have true spiritual revival by the word. Pirmais uh, princips, par ko mēs runājām, ir uh, paties garīga atmoda ar Dievu vārdu. And that means that once they are revived, the members in your church will be evangelistically minded. Un uh, no tā sako, tā doma, tad kad uh, uh, ir draudz piedzīvojas šādu atmodu ar vārdu, viņi būs daudz gatavāki iet evangelizācijā. So what happened was that once they were revived in 1999, the youth decided that, okay, this is not practical anymore. We need to decentralize Vespers. In other words, we need to bring our Friday night Bible studies to where our friends are. Mm-hmm. Un uh, pēc tam viņi saprata to, kad uh, viņiem tā centralizēties vienā vietā, tas nav, uh, tas nav pareizi, un viņiem vajag decentralizēties un vadīt šos te piekdienas um, mazo, mazo, mazo grupu bībeles studijas uh, dažādās vietās. It is hard to make someone come or invite someone to come if they have to travel so far. Ir grūti kādam atnākt, ja ir jāceļo tik ilgs laiks. So let's go to them. Iesim pie viņiem, nevis aicināsim viņus pie mums. And so what they did was where the church was in, in Forest Hill. Un tā tad draudz bija tajā Forest Hill. They vietā. made three care groups nearby. Tā tad tur tajā rajonā viņiem bija tā, šīs te trīs mazās grupas viņi izveidoja. And then two in the city. Un divas pilsētā. And this was only one year later. Un tas bija tikai pēc gada. These are some of the people that led in the city care groups. Tātad šie ir daži cilvēki, kas vadīja šīs te pilsētas uh, mazās grupas. And you can see that from the 50 people uh, that had originally started with. Tātad jūs redzēt no 50 cilvēkiem, kas sākumā bija. We now had probably about... 12 to 15 people in each group in each location. Katrā no tām grupām bija 12 līdz 15 cilvēki. Out of these groups probably there were about 5 to 6 members only. Un no šīm grupām 5 līdz 6 bija draudzes locekļi tikai. And they found that their university friends, their work friends were so much more willing to come now that it was much closer to them. Un viņi atklāja to, ka tie uh, darba kolēģi un universitātes uh, uh, studenti biedri uh, viņiem draudz vieglāk bija atnākt, tāpēc, ka bija tuvāk, nebija jābrauc tik tālu. 
At the end of 2003, just before we were about to start the church, we had multiplied and there were now four care groups closer to the city. Un 2003. gada beigās viņiem jau bija četras uh, mazās grupas, kas bija pilsētā. And then in 2005, about two years after the church had started, this had multiplied even more. Un 2005. gadā jau vairāk jau, jau kādas uh, septiņas, astoņas. As of 2008, this is what our care group network looks like. Un 2008. gadā šāds viņa mazo grupa tīklis jau izskatījās. And as we... And as we grew, we recognized that eventually asking all these people from the outskirts of Melbourne to come to church regularly in the city was also an inconvenience to the non-Christians. And thus sparked the burden again to plant churches. And thus in 2008-2009, we actually started something in the southeast area of Melbourne. In 2012, we started something in the west. In 2012, and as of 2014, we started another plant too. Un, uh, gadā, uh, arī jauns, jaun, jauns, jauns draudzes projekts ir sācies. Just before I left, I spent some time sitting down and plotting where all our care groups are at now. Un, uh, tagad, tikko pirms, pirms es braucu uz šeien, es mēģināju atkal sazīmēt, kuri viss mūsu mazās grupas. And each of these four plants now has their own network of care groups. Un tagad katrai šī te jaundibinātie šī šī te draudzē tagad jau četras ir ir katrai savs mazo grupu tīklis. Now I want to share this really cool story and this is one of my friends. Šis ir viens no maniem draugiem. The beauty of care group is that it's centered on the power of friendship. Tas mazās grupas skaistums ir tas, ka tā ir centrēta uz centrēta draudzībā. The essence of friendship is even found in the Bible. Uh, but, uh, būtī, and John 1, verse 41 to 42. It tells us that some of Jesus' disciples would not have even met Jesus if it were not for the power of friendship. The the Bible tells us that he that first findeth his brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And our Andrew for Gateway, uh, one of our Andrews actually, is called Owen. Un viens no mūsu Andrejiem ir Owens. Erwin actually became baptized, came to Gateway, and started to invite his sister Yuli. Yuli was baptized, studied the Bible, and then had a burden and started reaching out to her husband, Iwan. Un uh, Yuli atkal uh, prot, sā, arī iepazin Dievu un aizsniedz savu vīru, sāk līdzlīt vēst par Dievu uh, savam vīram. Iwan was baptized, had a burden, and started reaching out to his friend Arnold. Iwan sorry, tik Kristīts un viņš aizsniedz, what was his friend? Arnold. Un tā un aizsniedz un stāstī par Dievu savam draugam Arnoldam. His friend was baptized. Viņš draugs arī tik Kristīts. And started reaching out to his wife. Un viņš atkal stāstī savai sievai. And she too was baptized. Un arī viņa Kristijas. Arnold also started evangelizing or witnessing to his cousin, Gabby. Uh, Arnold arī liecināja savai uh, māsai, uh, what was the name? Gabby. Gabby. And Gabby started reaching out to some of her friends too. Un uh, Gabby arī sāk uh, liecināt saviem draugiem. At the same time, Erwin was reaching out to his other sister, Elsa. 
tajā pašā laikā Ovens savai otrai māsai sāk liecināt. And Elsa was baptized and started reaching out to her friend Melissa. Kur arī tik kristīt un tā atkal sāstī savai draudzenai Melisai. These are all members of Gateway who have returned to their home countries and brought the essence of care groups, brought the essence of friendship with them. Un šie ir visi Gateway draudzes locekļi kristīti tur, bet viņi atgriezušies savās mājvietās, kas ir ārpus... And all because Irwin... Is it outside Australia? Yes. Jā, kas ir ārpus Austrālijas. All because Owen decided to be a witness to his friends. Un tas tāpēc, ka Owens nolēma būt par liecinieku saviem radiniekiem, draugiem. Some of our Gateway alumni have actually gone to all these different countries in the world after their time in Melbourne. Tātad tur Melbourneā viņi brauc studēt, un tie studenti, kur caur Gateway nākuši pie Dievu, viņi atbraukuši atpakaļ savās valstīs, kur viņi dzīvo, un uzsākuši tur mazās grupas, un tās ir tās valsts, tās punkti, un tie cilvēki, kuri ir uzsākuši. Visās šajās pilsētās ir šīs te, nevis vienkārši mazās grupas, bet tās rūpju grupas, kas ir šīs te gateway draudzes modeles. We have to be very careful, though, that care group doesn't become a church unto itself. Ir jābūt gan uzmanīgiem, lai pati šī te mazā grupa, rūpju grupa nekļūst pati par tā kā draudzi. It is very important for us to remember that care groups are to bring people to church, not the other way around. Ir svarīgi saprast, ka šīs te mazājuma grupām ir jāvada cilvēkus draudzē, nevis otrādāk. And thus, it is so critical that the entire church is supportive of care groups and the power that they can have. Tāpēc ļoti kritiski ir tas, ļoti svarīgi ir tas, ka pārējā draudze atbalsta mazo grupu kalpošanu. So, as a church, sometimes we look at things like how many people come to church on a weekly basis. Kā draudz, mēs bieži vien skatāmies skaitļiem, pēksim, cik cilvēki apmeklēm mūsu divkalpojumus katru nedēļu. But in a church where care groups are present, we also look at the number of people that are going to care groups every week. Bet tur, kur ir šīs te rūpju grupas, mazās grupas, mēs skatāmies, cik cilvēki apmeklē mazās grupas. The ratio of seekers to members within the care group. Kāda ir attiecība starp draudzes locekļiem un meklētājiem šajā mazajā grupā? And the succession plan. How many leaders would be available to lead a care group in the new future? Un arī pēstacības plāns, cik daudz līderi var rasties no jauna šajā mazajā grupā. Nu, kā var jauns līderis attīstīt, kas var vadīt pēc tam šo mazo grupu? As such, when we meet new friends, non-Christian friends, Un tad, kad mēs satiekam jaunus draugus, nekristiešu draugus, they can be categorized, so to speak, into one of three groups. Mēs viņus tā kā, nu, kategorizējam, ja tā varētu izteikties, trijās grupās. Our bronze seekers are those that just come to care group and are not open to coming to church. Tātad ir pirmais līmenis bronzes, tātad šie te nekristieši, kuri vienkārši nāk uz mazo grupu, nāk tikai uz mazo grupu. Our silver ones are those that are going to church and either care group or having one-to-one Bible studies. Sudraba kategorija ir, kuriem ir individuālās bībeles studijas un kuri iet vai uz mazo grupu vai uz draudzi. And our gold are those that do all three. Un zelti ir tie, kuri iet gan uz draudzi, gan uz mazo grupu, gan ir personīgas bībeles studijas. Now, unlike the Olympics, it doesn't mean that the gold people are more valuable. Atšķirībā no olimpiskajām spēlēm, tas nenozīmē, ka tiem, kuri ir šajā zelta līmenī, tie ir vērtīgāki. But it just helps us to understand, as a church at large, where all our new friends are at spiritually. Bet vienkārši tas palīdz mums kā draudzē saprast, kur mūsu draugi ir garīgā ziņā, kā mēs, kur viņi iet, kas notiek ar viņiem. We mentioned that an evangelistic mindset is the ground, the the framework for a care group. Mēs jau minējām, ka šis te evangelizācijas domāšanas veids ir tas mūsu pamats. And what I want to highlight on this slide is that before the church plan started in 2003, un es gribu uzcelt šeit, kad pirms šīs te draudzes izveidošanās 2003. gadā, Care groups was only one of the things that helped to bring people or helped bring gateway to this point. Mazās grupas, šīs te rūpi grupas, bija tikai viena no lietām, kas veda cilvēkus. Care group only works if you also have evangelism. Šīs te mazās grupas strādā tikai tad, ja ir arī evangelizācija. And for the two years before... Cita veida ir evangelizācija. For the two years before our church plant, we had yearly evangelistic series. 
Četrus gadus pirms tam mums bija igadējās evangelizācijas sanāksmes. It also helps if you have a mindset where you go to the people and meet their needs where they are. Un arī palīdz, ja mēs kalpojam cilvēku vajadzībām, mums ir kaut kādi projekti, kur mēs kalpojam cilvēku praktiskajām vajadzībām. And so we also had some afternoon outreach programs that helped bring people. Mums bija pēcpusdienas šīs te, tātad šīs te pēcpusdienas evangelizācijas programmas, aizsniegšanas programmas, praktiskās kalpošanas. This evangelistic mindset has actually brought many of our alumni back home to different countries. Daudzus tos students, absolventus, šīs te evangelizācijas domāšanas veids ir pārņēmis, un viņi ir to aiznesuši uz tām valstīm, kur viņi dzīvo, no kurām viņi bija atbraukuši. And you remember Owen and a few of his other friends now are now doing the same thing in the Asian countries. Un tā tad mēs jau apskatījām par Ervinu, jeb, kā es sapratu, Olvenu, un tas šeit ir vēl daži cilvēki, kas ir davušos tie tur uz Malaiziju, Singapūru. Jā, un tā ir kādās kādās, kur mēs alumni esam gājās, kā mēs esam gājās. Jā, tā tad tur ir tie absolventi daži, kas ir pabeiguši studēt Melbourneā un davušos atpakaļ uz savām mājām, tur viņi tajās valstīs viņi atgriezušies un uzsākuši arī šīs te mazās grupas. So after that spiritual revival that leads to action, the second principle is very important. It says, belong, believe, behave. Tātad pirmais principis, kur ir šī tajā garīga atmoda, sako nākamais, kur ir piederi, tici un rīkojies. Basically what that means is that we want our new friends to feel a sense of belonging. Tātad mēs saviem jauniem draugiem gribam radīt piederības sajūtu. And once they do that, they will want to learn more about the Bible and what we believe. Un līdz pēc tam, tad, kad viņi izjūtīs šo piederības sajūtu, viņi gribēs arī zināt vairāk, kam mēs ticam. And the behavior change that we would like to see, the character change comes after. Un tad, ko mēs redzam, ka Dievu dara pie viņiem, ka arī viņa pie viņa raksturiem ir augļi. And so what we found is that this is a story of how friends brought their friends to care group. Un šeit mēs uzzinājām, kā draugi viens otru veda uz mazajām grupām. This was the first worship service that Gateway ever had. Varbūt vienu gaismu mēs, lai labāk uzvedzēm. And there were about 30 people. This was the first wash. Tātad šis bija pirmais tāds dievkalpojums, kas viņiem kā gateway draudzē bija. And I am here in the yellow. Jā, un tur esmu es. With church lunch to follow, very important. Kas bija, ko pēc tam sakoja, draudzes pusdienas, kas ir ļoti svarīgi. We cultivated this sense of fellowship, even though people had never experienced a potluck before. Pat, ja cilvēki pat nav nekad ēduši pēc dievkalpojuma kopīgas pusdienas, mēs to... As we grew these friendships, we found that our attendance also grew. Tad, kad mēs jau attīstījām šīs te draudzīgās attiecības, izveidojām, mums bija jau draugi radušies, mēs redzējām, ka apmeklējums arī pieauga. And from about 40 people, we now had to find a venue that could fit 146. Un no 40 cilvēkiem, kas bija sākumā, mēs sapratām, ka mums vajag atrast vietu, kur 140 cilvēkiem palikt. After a while, we found that the 146-person venue was too small. Mēs pēc tam sapratām, ka 140 vietu liela telpa, 140 sēdu vietas arī bija pa maz. And God actually moved us to a larger venue. Un Dievs mums pārvietoja uz lielākām telpām. As we found that our church was growing, there was a little bit of a... A burden was growing to start a second church plant, as I mentioned before. Un pēc tam jau mums radās jau tāda vēlēšanās jau un vajadzība dibināt otru draudzi. And so this is our second church plant in its first few weeks. Un šī te ir otrā, otrā šis te jaundibinātais draudzes projekts jau dažas nedēļas tikai darbojās. In 2010, the students on one of the campuses said, well, we would like to have a club on our campus too. Un, on to 2010? 2010. gadā daži studenti teica, ka mēs gribam ne tikai vienā universitātē šo te studentu klubu, bet citā universitāte, jo tur vairākas universitātes. They spent a few years developing care groups, having evangelism, and then finally there was a church plant there. Un tad dažus gadus viņi attīstīja mazās grupas, darīja citas evangelizācijas aktivitātes papildus, un tad izveidoja šo te jauno draudzi. This is what it looks like now. Tā izskatās apmēram tagad. 
The third principle is to know your customer, or in other words, if we are going to reach out to non-believers, customize your service, your care group as such. Trešais princips ir, ko mēs saucam, pazīsti savu klientu, varētu biznesu termoloģijā teikt, jeb izveido visu tā, lai šis te meklētājs netacīgais varētu justies labi un saprotami. Basically, put yourself in their shoes. Citiem vārdiem sakot, iekāp šī te meklētāja kurpēs. For someone that has never ever come to a church before, um, this is what they see. Dažiem, kuri, citi, daudziem, kuri ir nekad nav atnākuši uz draudu, tas ir tas, ko viņi redz. So what we call care groups, they just see it as people that are caring and friendly to them. Tas, ko mēs saucam savā draudzē par mazajām grupām, viņi, viņi to redz kā rūpēšanos un attiecības. They don't call it Sabbath school, they just call it someone teaching me. Viņi nesauc Sabbath school par Sabbath school, bet par mācīšanu, vienkārši kāds, kāds man māca. And similarly, you can see, they don't call it personal ministry, they just know it as someone coming to give them Bible study. Tātad viņi nesauc uh, personīgo kalpošanu par personīgo kalpošanu, bet kādu, ar kuru viņi var studēt Bībeli divatā. So the question we need to ask ourselves are, do our new friends understand what the church can provide them? Pirmais jautājums, kas mums ir jāsaprot, vai mūsu draudze šim te meklētājiem neticīgajiem ir saprotam, vai viņi saprot visu, kas tur notiek? And this paradigm shift is also seen in the way we look at what our church can offer. Un šis te uh, domāšanas uh, uh, veida maiņa ir arī tas, kā mēs skatāmies uz draudzi. Everything in church becomes an evangelistic opportunity. Katra uh, lieta draudzē kļūst par evangelizācijas iespēju. Care groups can be an opportunity for you to witness through friendship. Uh, mazās grupas var kļūt par tavu iespēju liecināt caur draudzību. Sabbath schools can become discipleship areas. Uh, uh, Sabbath schools, uh, bībeles studijas var kļūt par, par māceklības uh, uh, Momentari. One of the things we do in Gateway is that those that are going to be care group leaders soon. Uh, viena lieta, ko mēs darām uh, Gateway draudzē, tie, kuri uh, gatavojas kļūt par mazo grupu vadītājiem. Spend one or two quarters actually teaching a Sabbath school full of non-Christians. Uh, pavada mācot vienu ceturksni vai divus ceturksņus uh, Sabbath skolu uh, nekristiešiem. And they are coached and mentored by some of our pastors and Bible workers. Un uh, viņiem ir uh, coachings un mentorings no uh, dažiem pieredzējušiem mācītājiem. And they grow as much as the seekers do. Un uh, tā kā uh, šie te topošie vadītāji aug, tāpat kā šie te meklētāji pieaug. These are some of the examples of the things that we have done in our church last year. Šie daži piemēri, ko mēs kā draudz esam darījuši pagājušajā gadā evangelizācijas programmas. And I want to highlight that the programs that you run don't all have to be evangelistic series. Un uh, visas programmas, ko jūs uh, vadat, tām nav jābūt evangelizācijas sanāksmēm. These are programs across all the different aspects of church life. Tām jābūt uh, dažādām lietām par draudzes dzīvi. Our children's Sabbath school, for example, became a VBS program. Uh, mūsu bērnu uh, Sabbath school kļuva par, what? Uh, like, uh, evangelistic program for the kids. Uh, kļu, mūsu bērnu Sabbath school kļuva pārvērtās par evangelizācijas tādu programmu bērniem. So the children as young as seven or eight started inviting their school friends to this uh, holiday program on Saturdays. Un tā tad septiņi, astoņi gadīgi veci bērni aicināja savus klases biedrus uz brīvdienu programmu sestdienās. Uh, uh, We ran programs for training for our members only. Un uh, mums ir arī apmācīts programs tikai draudzes locekļiem. We ran social events on the university. Mums ir uh, sociālie pasākumi universitātēs. And then we also had our prophecy seminars too. Un arī pravietojumu semināri arī mums ir. Now evangelistic meetings for us are not only about um, ha, not only about sowing seeds but also to experience the, the harvest that God has for us. Uh, evangelizācijas sanāksmes nav tikai par uh, sēklas sēšanu, bet arī par uh, ražas novākšanu. Our entire year or calendar for the church is based on the evangelistic cycle. Uh, mūsu visu gadu kalendārs draudzē ir balstīts uz evangelizācijas ciklu. And these are some of the stories that have uh, come from evangelism's past. Un šeit būs dažas stāsts no evangelizācijas sanāksmēm. This couple here are Svet and Francis. What? Svet and Francis. The oh. couple, the names. Okay. Yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. I thought nationalities. Uh, šis te pāris ir uh, Svet un Francis. Uh, they are from Prague. 
viņa ir no Prāgas. And they ha- they stayed in Melbourne for many many years. Viņi daudz gadus palika Melbourne dzīvē Melbourne. But they actually received a brochure for our evangelistic series from a child of 8 years old accompanied by a non-Christian student. Un uh, viņi saņēma brošūru uz evangelizācijas sanāksmi no 8 gadīgu bērnu, kurš bija kopā ar uh, nekristiešu pieaugušo. All of our care group members, whether they be Christians or non-Christians, are used to the idea of Saturday afternoons, everyone in the church goes out uh, on street ministry or to witness to the community. Uh, mūsu draudzē uh, gandrīz visas sabata pēcpusdienas ir uh, uh, aktivitātes, kur mēs uh, ejam ārā un darām kaut ko. And so they came to the evangelism after receiving this brochure at a train station. Un tātad viņi šo te vilciens stacijā saņēm šo te brošūru un atnāc uz evangelizācijas sanāksmi. They listened to the whole series and were baptized. Un viņi apmeklē visu šo te sanāksmu sēriju un tik kristīti. And the next year they were uh, inviting other people to the evangelism at their market stall that they run. Un uh, nākamajā gadā uh, viņi uh, sāka aicināt cilvēkus, kas nāc uz viņu uz viņu uz viņu veikalu, ko viņi vadī. The beauty of care groups is that it is based on the principle of each person reaching one other person. That's all it takes. Mazās grupas skaistums ir tajā, ka katrs cilvēks aizsniedz tikai vienu. Tas ir viss, kas ir vajadzīgs. Now care groups are often quite uh, quite exciting when they start. Uh, tas mazās grupas, rūpju grupas, viņa gadījumā ir diezgan aizraujošas, ka tās sākas. But it is very easy to lose momentum. Bet ir ļoti um, viegli zaudēt šo te dedzību. And without training, without planning for the next line of leaders to take over, your care group uh, will end after a few years. Un uh, bez uh, tādas uh, apzinātas uh, plānošanas un jaunu vadītāju sagatavošanu mazajai grupai uh, šī te mazā grupa apsīks pēc dažiem gadiem. And so one of the things that Gateway emphasizes is that of training. Un vienu lietam, ko mēs kā Gateway draudze uzsveram, ir apmācība. Basically, we want to go back to the basics and model our church after the New Testament church. Un uh, tas, ko mēs mēģinām darīt, mēs uh, gribam atgriezties pie pamatiem un modelēt mūsu draudzi pēc jaunās darības uh, parauga. And the fundamentals of spirit of prophecy. Un arī uh, uz uh, praviešu garu uh, liecībām. And so you can see number three, I'm sorry my square moved, is that Gateway wants to be a training center to train young people to continue this momentum of care groups. Jā, un tātad trešais punkts ir, ka viņi kā draudz grib būt apmācību centrs, lai sagatavotu jauniešu kļūt par dvēseļu mantautājiem kristumu. What we have now is a permanent facility next to the university in this heart of Melbourne City. Viņiem pašlaik ir tāda pastāvīga ēka, netālu no universitātes, and this allows us, centrs. This allows us to run programs for the community during the week. Un tas arī uh, viņiem atļauj vadīt dažādas uh, programmas sabiedrībai nedēļas, uh, nedēļas laikā. So there are many things that you can do. We have done some health food seminars and cooking demonstrations. Tad mēs esam daudz ko darījuši tai skaitā arī veselības seminārs ar uh, ēst gatavošanu. But because we're based on a university campus with a lot of people that are from international backgrounds, we also run free English classes. Bet tāpēc, ka tur ir daudz internacionālie studenti no dažādām pasaules valstīm, mēs piedāvājam arī angļu valodas kursus par brīvu. You can see we also have some relationship seminars, some prophecy seminars. Uh, arī pravietojumi semināri, attiecību semināri. Recently, some of the other things that we have tried are things like uh, uh, stress management, uh, writing your resume, how to find a job, which are all meeting the needs of our student demographic. Un arī tādas lietas kā stresa menedžments, kā uh, rakstīt pieteikumu, piesaskoties darbā, tās tās vajadzības, kas ir nepieciešamas studentiem. We also run Bible schools to train our young people for mission. Mēs arī vadām Bībeles skolas, lai apmācītu jauniešus misijai. And as a result, we have had these interns work with Gateway for about six months to two years as Bible workers. Un šeit tad mums ir šie te interni, jeb tie, kas praktizējas, kuri sešas mēneši līdz divu gadu laikā tad praktizējās pie viņiem, lai kļūtu par bīvās darbiniekiem. These people bring the spirit of 
uh, friendship evangelism back home. Un tātad viņi šo te draudzības evangelizācijas garu aiznas atpakaļ mājās. And they come from countries as far away as America, uh, Tonga, New Zealand. Tātad Amerika, Jaunzēlande, Tonga? Uh, Pacific Islands. Um, jā, kaut kādu pas... Um, um, Indijas okeāna savu. Mm -hmm. Ok. One of the things that we also want to do is to sponsor a group or a, a make a presence on the university campuses where we're at. Ja, tā, tas ko mēs daram, mēs uh, nodrošinām to, kad ir uh, tā tad mūsu draudzes uh, locekļu klātbūtne arī universitātes tajā pilsētiņā, un tad viņiem ir studentu klubs. And so every church plan that we want to have starts off a few years before with a student club. Tā tad pirms katras draudzes sākšanas mēs sākam ar šo te studentu klubu kādā universitātē. And these university care groups then start to meet every Friday night. Un tad šajā universitātē esošās mazās grupas uh, uh, veido sanāksmes katru piekdienu. We make ourselves known at orientation activities during the year. Un viņiem ir tās saucamās uh, uh, iepazīšanās aktivitātes, ko viņi katru gadu sākumā vada. We have a weekly Bible school table just outside the biggest library. Un tātad viņiem ir vislielākais uh, Ah, viņiem ir uh, lielais tā kā bibeles skolas, tātad, uh, nu, galds. And we actually Stands. go out during lunch time inviting people to partake in surveys uh, and free student activities like vegetarian barbecues and so on. Un tad mēs uh, ejam aptojā cilvēku šajā universitātē aizpildot šo te anketu, kas viņiem interesē, kādas viņiem ir vajadzības un tā tālāk. So this is an example. Tā šis ir viens no piemēriem. Un tā tajā universitātes, nu, pats jau pa tāds 1. septembra pasākums. One of the things we have done, and you may or may not have heard of it, is called the Daniel Challenge. Varbūt jūs esat dzirdējuši, viena no lietām, ko mēs praktizējam, ir tā Daniela izaicinājums. It is a program based on 10 weeks of lifestyle change. Tātad šī ir programma, kas ir 10 nedēļu programma, lai mainītu dzīvesveida ieradumus. Based on Daniel chapter 1, what we do is we take this group of participants through a challenge. Un tātad tas ir balstīts uz Daniela pirmo nodaļu. Mēs paņemam dalībnieks, kur vēlas šeit piedalīties un, un viņiem iet And they introduce one aspect of healthy living per week, such as sleeping more or drinking more water. Un katru nedēļu viņiem tiek iepazīstināts jauns dzīvesveida aspekts, kā piemēram gulēt vairāk, atpūsties vairāk. And so what they find is by the end of 10 weeks they have 10 new principles uh, and they have to uh, log how much of each thing they are now doing. Un 10 nedēļu laikā viņiem ir šad 10 jauni principi un viņiem viņiem ir tā kā arī tāda viņiem arī jāievada kā viņi viņus ievēro, nu un tā. Now because students love challenge and competition, un uh, tā iemesla dēļ, ka studentiem patīk izaicinājumi un sacensība. Uh, at the end of the 10 weeks the person that accumulates the most points gets a prize. Uh, persona, kura sakrāj visvairāk punktus, dabū un balu. And so what we found was that those participants that actually came to the Daniel challenge eventually transferred over to care group. Un uh, mēs atklājām, ka tie, kur iziet šo te Daniela izaicinājumu, viņi pēc tam uh, daudz no tiem pievienojušajai mazajai grupai. We ran the meeting for each Daniel challenge on Friday afternoon every week for 10 weeks. Des nedēļas katru piekdienas pēcpusdienu mēs tad vadam šo te Daniela izaicinājumu uh, pēcpusdienu. And at the end of the 10 weeks we said if you'd like to keep coming to cultivate these friendships to challenge each other to have a healthier life, keep coming on Friday night. Un pēc tam tad tas tas 10 nedēļu beigās mēs sakam, ja jūs gribat jo joprojām, teiksim, atbalstīt viens otru veselīgā dzīvesveidā, nāciet uz mūsu mazajām grupām. And many of those have now been baptized. Un daudz no tiem ir jau kristīti. Having these outreach activities to meet other people's needs helps you to do several things at once. Un tātad kalpošana cilvēku vajadzībām ļauj mums darīt vairākas lietas vienlaicīgi. I'll give you one example. This is a lunchtime catch-up that we had on the university campus. Lunchtime what? Like a lunchtime meet. Un uh, te ir viņiem tāds uh, pusdienu sanāksmes, ko viņi arī vada. And this was when I was the president of this student club. Un uh, tas bija tajā laikā, kad es biju prezidente šam, šim uh, studentu klubam. And so within this group that you can see here, I have people ranging from care group seekers, 
uh, Seventh-day Adventist members as well as uh, new friends altogether. Un uh, tur bija tie cilvēki, kas tur ir, viņi ir gan uh, tie, kas nāks mazajām grupām, kas nav, kas nav draudz locekti, gan daži adventisti, gan pilnīgi jauni draugi. And there is no way that I can talk to all these different people at once. Un uh, nav iespējams man runāt uz šiem cilvēkiem vienlaicīgi. But what I found was so beautiful because I found that God really blessed. Uh, bet es atradu, ka kā ļoti skaista lieta, ko Dievs svētī. One of my... Uh, one of my Seventh Day Adventist members, who was previously very, very disinterested, started to bring their own friends. Viena no um, manām, um, no manas komandas, kas ir manā draudzē, kur iepriekš bija ļoti neinteresēta evangelizācijā, sāk vest kādu savus draugus. And where previously he had no interest in talking to people that he didn't know before, he was now very interested to make sure everyone talked to his friends so he didn't look bad. Uh, un uh, viņam uh, tad šim puisim, kuram iepriekš nepatika vest cilvēks un stāstīt viņiem kaut ko, viņam, viņš tagad gribēja uh, vest savus draugus, uh, lai, lai redzētu, ka viņam arī ir draugi nāk un, un, un nevis. And as he continued to do that, he became aware of how all these other people in the group needed his friendship too. Un uh, viņš sāk ieraudzīt, ka daudziem citiem arī ir vajadzīga uh, he started to cultivate a spirit of friendship and soon everyone was bringing their friends. Un viņš sāk kultivēt šo uh, draudzības garu un, un, un līdz ar to citiem tas pielip un arī sāk You see, K-group is, a, K-group is a very nice idea, but it's also very easy to sit at arm's length and watch it happen. Uh, šī te mazo grupu ideja ir ļoti, uh, ļoti jauka, bet ir viegli vienkārši uz to noskatīties un teikt, tas ir jauki. It only really takes off when you invite your friends because then you have an interest to see the group succeed. Uh, šī te rūpju grupa īstam uh, sākas tad, uh, kad tu sāc aicināt savu draugu, kurš tev patiešām rūp. And that is where principle 5 comes in. Un šeit uh, ir nākamais princips piektais. And when all these principles, all these values come together, uh, we can see the Holy Spirit at work. Un ka šie principi, šīs vērtības <coughs> darbojas kopā, mēs varam redzēt, kā svētais gars maina dzīves. Soul winning is for you and for me. Uh, dvēseļu mantošana ir man un tev domāta. And I want to draw your attention to the bold in the middle. It says the spiritual life of the church can be kept alive only as the members make personal efforts to win souls to Christ. Christ. God could have reached his object in saving sinners, but in order for us to develop a character like Christ, we must share in his work. Dievs varēja pats aizsniegt grēcinieks bez mūsu palīdzības, bet lai mēs attīstītu Kristum līdzīgu raksturu, mums ir jādalās viņa darbā. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview, a bit of an understanding of how care group fits into the context of a larger church. Un uh, šeit mazliet būs, uh, kā mazā grupa uh, iedarās lielas draudzes kontekstā. And in our next session, we want to explain a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of what actually happens during care group. Un nākamajā sesijā mēs runāsim tieši praktiskas lietas, kas ir, no kā sastāv šī te mazā grupa, kas tur notiek. How long should it go for? What should you do? Cik ilgi tev vajadzētu notikt? Ko tur vajadzētu darīt? How do you start? Who leads it? How many members? Kā, kā, kā sākt? Kurš vada? Cik daudz draudzes locekļiem vajadzētu būt? And then hopefully we'll have some time for questions at the end as well. Un, un tad pēc tam mums būs jautājumi un atbildes. So.